How does sleep apnea cause so many medical problems in so many people? Well, you know, Joe, I think the first thing we have to understand is what is sleep apnea? Then it makes it easier to understand what it does to our body. Knowing what happens with sleep apnea gives us an easy view into how it can be related to so many very serious and terrible maladies. And it gives us an insight into how to stop many of those problems from happening in the first place before they even initiate. It's important for everyone hearing this information to know that if you have this sleep issue, you can get it under control. You can add years to your life and vibrant life to those extra years. The most common type of obstructive sleep apnea is obstructive sleep apnea. There is central, there is mixed, but the most common is sleep apnea that is obstructive. As we fall asleep and relax, the muscles in our mouth and our throat relax. That's good. But in a person with apnea, the relaxation can be, can be too much, and the soft tissues surrounding the airway can collapse in upon itself and become obstructed. That's why it's called obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA. Basically, it's similar to going out in the yard on a summer day and trying to move the sprinkler without getting wet. What you do is you crimp the hose. I've got a hose here like this. Basically, if you're trying to move, remove the uh, wetness from getting on you, you crimp the hose, and then you can move the sprinkler. That's what happens in the airway. It crimps. And the air we're trying to breathe doesn't flow through. It stays out of our body. Every single cell in our body needs oxygen. People with sleep apnea stop breathing for seconds or even up to a minute or so, dozens of times in an hour. Some people with severe sleep apnea a hundred times an hour. The more times per hour that the apneic stops breathing, the worse the apnea is categorized during an overnight sleep study that's called a polysomnogram. Each and every time we stop breathing, the cells in our kidney, our liver, the brain, our thigh muscles, stomach, virtually every part of our body that's nourished by the circulatory system is depleted of the life energy of oxygen. Those cells wither and wilt, and we suffer the consequences with diseases, disorders, and disasters that until recently were treated only after they became a problem. That's what sleep apnea does. So what we're recognizing now is that in many cases, we can solve the problem before it actually exists clinically by ensuring that our gallbladder, our heart tissues, and the tissues of all our organs and body parts actually get the oxygen they need all the time. Dr. Klein, uh, before someone's diagnosed, is, is there a way that a spouse or friend who uh, may witness someone sleeping, actually uh, maybe an early detection that this problem might actually exist? Great question, Joe. Um, rather than me explain it, I do have a video that I use to show my patients so that they can understand it. And perhaps what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring that video into this uh, uh, informative uh, talk and uh, then you could visualize it. The people watching could visualize it rather than just hearing my words about it. it. It really explains it well. These arrows here show the air coming into our bodies down into our lungs. And these arrows show exhalation of depleted air. Now collapse occurs. Good air can't get in. Bad air can't get out. Our brain recognizes danger. Makes us gasp which opens up the airway. This process is repeated all night long. Wow, Dr. Klein, that video made me think of a car that someone doesn't take care of. They don't maintain it. Uh, they don't do the regular oil changes or the tune-ups and they use bad gas and that vehicle shudders and shakes all the time and, and you don't know if it's gonna make it down the road the next mile. Joe, that's a great analogy. Um, but before we talk about that, it brings up a very interesting point. You asked a little bit before, why isn't research in the past looking at this? Why is it just recently focusing on sleep issues? And why are we just now realizing that so many of these medical problems, just like with the car, are related to sleep? If you were a large pharmaceutical company, you'd be in the business of selling legal drugs. You'd spend millions and millions of dollars on research to find a drug that people need. 
then you'd spend enormous amounts of time and energy and more money to get that drug FDA approved. And then you'd sell it to the public. A pill does not control sleep apnea. So simply, there's no financial reason for the pharmaceutical industry to investigate it, to get involved with it. So why is medicine so interested all of a sudden? Just a few years ago, a major hospital compared the health records of 3,000 patients who just recently were diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. Then they randomly selected 3,000 more patients who they knew definitely did not have a sleep problem. They went back 10 years into the medical billing records of both groups. And what they found was that the group of people who slept normally had half the problems. The people with sleep apnea had double the medical bills. Now, medicine was interested. In fact, the National Commission on Sleep Disorders Research published these words. At present, the American public is not receiving the benefits of new findings on sleep disorders. 95% of the victims remain undiagnosed, largely because health professionals have not had the opportunity to learn about sleep disorders and sleep deprivation. There is an urgent need for physicians, nurses, all healthcare professionals to be able to identify and refer or treat patients with sleep disorders. This, of course, was the National Commission on Sleep Disorders Research. Fortunately, that now is rapidly changing. You see articles about sleep in Reader's Digest. Physicians see articles regarding sleep issues in their professional journals. As doctors and patients become more aware, the entire population will benefit. That's why we're talking about it here today, to spread the word that we can be healthier and live longer with some very easy steps. So, Joe, back to your question. How is it controlled? Sometimes it's as easy as losing weight. If you gain weight, it's not just in your belly or in your hips. You put on fatty tissue inside your mouth and throat. That extra amount of fatty tissue closes the opening of the airway. Of course, thin people can have sleep apnea too, and losing weight wouldn't be recommended for them. A device called a CPAP or a BiPAP can help save your life. A local company, Wright and Flippers, were kind enough to bring one in for us to uh, look at today. This machine performs a very easy task. It blows air in our bedroom into our lungs by pushing it so that the airway doesn't collapse. It's similar to a pair of thunder sticks. Have you ever been to a Pistons game during the playoffs? They have those two long, almost balloon-like, you bring them together, it makes a lot of noise, it makes excitement. Well, if there's a little leak in one of those, it limps over and it's not functional. If you continue to blow air into it, it gets functional again. This mask blows air into our nose and mouth, and it keeps it functioning so that the oxygen we need can get to where we need it, all over, all through our body. Remember, always ask your doctor so we can maintain a healthy community. I'm Joe Sturza. Thanks for watching Ask the Doctor. If you would like to learn more about how to sleep better, go to Dr. Klein's website at www.sleepapneamichigan.com. Watch other Ask the Doctor videos with Dr. Richard Klein to learn how to sleep more comfortably.